at least one Canadian senator is drawing chilling historical parallels and similarities between liberal introduced censorship legislation and that seen previously in totalitarian regimes. Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News, and if you have been following us long enough, then you probably know that around here, we actively oppose censorship and the squashing of free speech. But the Justin Trudeau liberals seem to giddily embrace it. You see, they introduced Bill C-11, which is part of this concerning trend of illiberal reactionary conduct by our current liberal federal government over its nearly eight-year reign. And it's precisely why we are calling on the Canadian Senate to squash the bill in its tracks at StopTheCensorship.com. Because our concerns, well, it turns out that they're accurate, and at least one Canadian senator agrees. As a background here, Bill C-11 is a piece of legislation, as I mentioned, brought forward by the federal Liberal government that would mean sweeping regulation of internet content and censorship by the Canadian Radio Television Broadcasting Corporation, or CRTC. It's the first of its kind in Canada, and Bill C-11, which is an act to amend the Broadcasting Act, has been widely criticized as an Orwellian attempt to control the content Canadians can produce and access online. Yet it passed in the House of Commons and has now made its way to the third reading at the Canadian Senate, where the only hope of squashing it is by appealing to unelected and primarily liberal appointed senators. So it seemed hopeless until liberal appointed Senator David Richards drew a chilling comparison. He said in Germany, it was called the Ministry of National Enlightenment. This reference, of course, draws parallels to the Reich Ministry for Propaganda and Public Engagement, which controlled film, radio, theater, and the press during Hitler's reign in Nazi Germany. Hitler utilized mass media to propagate his radical ideologies and political goals, while his faithful followers burned books to ensure the purity of the state. Stalin again will be looking over our shoulders when we write, furthered this Canadian senator, drawing additional similarities between this bill and dictatorships. See, Stalin took control of the notorious Russian publication Pravda, which means truth, and used it as a powerful tool that eventually became the official mouthpiece of the Soviet Union and Stalin's own dogmas. These official ideologies of these regimes had this glaring commonality, censorship and control of all printed and produced communication with the public. Senator Richards continued with his unsettling parallels, stating that he thinks the bill is censorship being bundled up and sold to the public as national inclusion. That was before he further criticized the legislation for creating compliance instead of greatness, and he even refers to the dystopian writings of author George Orwell directly. Orwell said that we must resist the prison of self-censorship, this bill goes a long way to construct such a prison. 1949, George Orwell had a vision of the future. Today, that vision is still a best-selling novel, and his prophecy remains as terrifying as ever. If you want a vision of the future, Winston, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. A future where freedom becomes slavery. Where privacy is forbidden, the past forgotten, and where living people simply vanish. The totalitarian society described in 1984 uses a super state party approved version of English, referred to as newspeak, to quell complex thought and manipulate its citizens into robotic responses. One infamous word being the term thought crime, which defines any belief that questions the ruling party as, well, a crime. As the Newspeak Committee. Working overtime. Butter, 2%, milk, 6%, Plus big wastage is an adjective. Muscle, Plus big problem is timing the language to scientific Five, advance. Four, three percent. Yes. Three, nine percent. It's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. You won't have seen the dictionary, 10th edition yet, Smith. It's that thick. The 11th edition will be that thick. Well, the revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. 
secret is to move from translation to direct thought to automatic response. No need for self-discipline. Language coming from here, not from here. Excuse me for intruding, but what you're saying is that we should be rid of the last vestiges of Goldsteinism when the language has been cleaned. I couldn't be more in agreement with you, brother. Absolutely. It's exactly what appears to be currently happening to any remaining intellect, free thinker in Western society over the last decade, and I mean, arguably even prior to, but has been especially intensified under the COVID-19 regime. From medical professionals being silenced and threatened into self-censorship by their regulators, like the countless doctors currently suspended by the Ontario College of Physicians and Surgeons for simply upholding their oath of first do no harm and simply providing their patients with true informed consent in wake of novel pharmaceutical emergency use drugs. Or of course, free speech advocate, psychologist, author, speaker, and academic Jordan Peterson, who faces an onslaught of censorship mobs and who has most recently received an order from his regulator, the College of Psychologists of Ontario, in a disturbing attempt to re-educate him. It's a slippery slope and we're already on it. Will Canadian senators squash Bill C-11 as we continue on this downward spiral into oppressive censorship abyss? Urge them to stop this legislation at stopthecensorship.com. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. If you agree that censorship is a slippery slope, then head on over to stopthecensorship.com, sign our petition, send a quick email to senators and urge them to squash this alarming piece of liberal introduced legislation. That's stopthecensorship.com.